This forlorn and pathetic little whistle stop on the Burlington Northern Santa Fe tracks is in uh, Victorville, California. Railways were turned into gravy trains by the robber barons of America in the 19th century and by corporate investors worldwide in the 21st century. They made fortunes by plundering the pockets of taxpayers. Tax-funded tracks to nowhere can deliver rich rewards to landowners. This is what happened with the Phantom Streetcar in Washington, D.C. A few years ago, the District Department of Transportation decided to reconstruct H Street, redo the utilities and the surface. And because we thought that at some point in the future it might make sense to have a streetcar line here, we decided to put streetcar tracks in as part of the reconstruction process. Lo and behold, even though the tracks start at nowhere and go to nowhere, the mere f act of putting these streetcar tracks in the street fueled speculation that this was an up-and-coming neighborhood. Land values began to increase dramatically. Vast swathes of America were handed to the robber barons who built steam-driven railways. Sand was turned into gold dust. Governments keep repeating their mistakes. Is this happening with the plan to build a bullet train from Victorville, which will fuel another property boom in the desert? Just to fast drag gamblers to Las Vegas? It's proposed to upgrade these tracks to bullet train quality so that people can get from here to gambling in Las Vegas in an hour or so less than they can get there now. The capital can't be reinvested to make new jobs the way it could be if it were invested in a small business with rapid turnover. It's not a very smart use of the taxpayer's money. Risking money is necessary for a dynamic economy. But does the market have to be like a casino? Putting a nation's resources to their best use requires a financial solution that encourages everyone to use land for the common good instead of abusing it for private gain. You'll see acres and acres of parking. Acres a mere few blocks from the U.S. Capitol, acres that should be providing housing for people, employment for people, and not parking for cars. Rick Ryback worked as a town planner in Washington. He reveals an insider's view of how the land is quarantined. Public goods and services create land values, and these land values can be a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it, it's a recognition that areas that are well served by public goods and services are valuable places to live, work, and shop. But on the other hand, the higher rents that are charged by landowners who own this well served land can often displace existing residents, existing store owners, and even inhibit new people from moving in if those landowners get too greedy. The way to avoid this problem is for the public sector to recapture and recycle the land values that it creates itself. By doing this, they mandate that land that's well served by public goods and services gets put into use according to the value of that land. Landowners would pay in proportion to the benefits they receive as reflected by higher land values. So the higher the land value, the more they'd pay. The higher the land value, the more benefit they're receiving from the public. So that's both understandable and fair. And while we would collect more in return for providing valuable goods and services, in exchange we would collect less by 
reducing taxes on what the landowners they themselves create. In other words, we would tax their buildings less. By taxing land more and buildings less, we would create an impetus to develop well-served land while making that development more profitable and affordable to those who want to live and work there. In Europe, Denmark led the way in using land for the common good. This new metro was funded out of the rents of the locations which it served. A hundred years ago, the Danes agreed to tax the value of land. Today, Copenhagen is a city in love with bicycles. But Orestat, the recently constructed town on the edge of Copenhagen, is a suburb whose modern infrastructure was funded out of the value of the land.